Good morning, church. This is Minister Devin Waring. I'm here to tell you that instead of having a new message by Pastor Ellis this morning, we're going to have a flashback message. Now, this flashback message is from March 15th, which was actually our last day together physically in church as a result of COVID-19. And what I want you to do now is listen attentively to this very timely word of God. It is so self-explanatory. It is entitled, We Can Make It. i like everyone this morning, I want to tell you now, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Amen. And we will be starting at the fourth verse. I'll give you time to get there. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you this morning. We thank you how you blessed all of us that we could come together one more time and to give you praise. We thank you, God, for the word that you've given me today. I pray <clears throat> as I come forth with this word that they will realize, dear God, that you are there and that their only hope is in you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With the situation that's going on today, uh, we don't have all the answers, but we do know who has hey! the answers. Yes. And the title of my message today, I'm hoping it will make you think. And the title is, We Can Make It. Amen. 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 Yeah. No matter how it seems or what's going around, in our minds, we have to think positively and know that we can make it through anything with God's help. Yes. We will start with the uh, fourth verse, I mean the fourth chapter, and the start at the sixth verse. I don't want to read it all. I could read it all, but. Um, in whom the God in this world have blinded the minds of them and believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach, not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and our, ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. On your own time, you can read a little more. Amen. My title again is, We Can Make It. Yeah. Since God has so generously led us in on what he's doing, we're not about to throw upon hardships and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open, the whole truth and display so that those who want to, can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. If our message is obscure to anyone, it's not because we're holding back in any way. No, it's because these other people are looking or going the wrong way and refuse to give it serious attention. All they have eyes for is the fashionable guy of darkness. They think he can give them whatever they want and they won't have to bother believing a truth they can't see. They're stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that shines with Christ who gives us the best picture of God we'll ever get. Remember, our message is not about ourselves. I'll read it again. Our message 
is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the master. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God isn't left outside. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trials and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake which makes Jesus' life all the more evident to us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. We're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believe it, so I said it. We say we believe, and what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looked like things are falling apart. I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. Even on the outside, it looks like things are falling apart. Should I say it again? (laughs) On the inside, where God is making new life. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. How many agree with me on that? His grace constantly is with us. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration that meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. 1 Corinthians 5, for we know when these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, they will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven. God made, not handmade. And we'll never have to relocate, relocate our tents again. Sometimes we can hardly wait to move And so we cry out in frustration compared to what's coming. Living conditions around here seems like a stopover in an unfurnished shack. And we're tired of it. We've been given a glimpse of the real thing, our true home, our resurrection bodies. The Spirit of God whets our appetite by giving us a taste of what's ahead. He puts a little of heaven in our hearts so that we'll never settle for less. That's why we live with such a good cheer. You won't see us drooping our heads or dragging our feet. Oh, no. No. Even these cramped up conditions that we have, they don't get us down. Amen. Amen. They only remind us of the spacious living conditions ahead. I know all of us are looking for that. When we get to heaven, we don't have to worry about all this kind of stuff that we're dealing with now. It's what we trust in, but don't yet see that keeps us going. A lot of us going through, and we see things, and the devil tries to put in our heads. But there's a hope in us. And it stays there. No matter what comes our way, we know for a fact that God has prepared a way for all of us. 
It's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. Do you suppose a few ruts in the road or rocks in the path are going to stop us? When the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile for homecoming. But next, their exile, no homecoming, is the main thing. Cheerfully pleasing God is the main thing, and that's what we aim to do. Regardless of our conditions, sooner or later, we all have, all have to face God, regardless of our conditions. We will appear before Christ and take what's coming to us as a result of our actions, either whether they are good or bad. You know you're going to have to face the results. That keeps us vigorous, you can be sure. It's no light thing to know that we'll all one day stand in that place of judgment. If anybody said there's a change coming, you got to let them know, oh yeah, you're going to stand before God. You're going to stand before him. You either do it right or face the consequences. That sounds kind of rough, don't it? But it's the truth. That's why we work urgently with everyone we meet to get them ready to face God. God alone knows how well we do this, but I hope you realize how much and deeply we care. We're not saying this to make ourselves look good to you. We just thought it would make you feel good, proud even, that we're on your side and not just nice to your face as so many people are. Yes. Now you met them kind of people. Oh, yes. Sweet around you. Say I love you. Yes. Hug you. And then you wonder where they are and what happened. Yes. But knowing that you have Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. The center. Yes. The leader of your life. Yes. You have a lot of hope. Yes. Amen. Yes. If I acted crazy I did it for God. If I acted over seriously, I did it for you. Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. His love has the first and last word in everything that we attempt to do. Remember, your life don't belong to you. The devil always is prepared. He's working hard. You know that? He has no trouble working hard with you. But on the other side, you got to remember, no matter what you do, devil, you don't have in charge of me. Listen, when the devil gets around me and he starts his stuff with me so bad, if anybody was around me, they say, she's going crazy. But I talk to him, not privately, I talk to him out loud. Yes. And here's exactly, especially when he gets on me really heavy, I tell him, you might as well get out of my face. Yes. And this is how I talk to him. Because my God is going to take care of everything. You might as, well, might as well go back to the pit where you belong. Because I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to him. When my husband had cancer, I had to keep it to myself. It was the roughest thing. The devil, he bothered me in my sleep. He talked to me when I got up. He talked to me every time I looked at him. But I said, devil, you do not have control over none of this. My Lord Jesus Christ is the one in control. And then God let me remember when the doctor told him, I sat there. And he sat there and he said, I hear what you say, doctor. But I'm a man of faith. Amen. And I know what you're telling me, and I'm going to do exactly what you said. But I'm a man of faith, and I'm trusting in the Lord. The doctor said, okay, and we went out. And I said, you can come, you can say, tell me, how you really feel? Are you really upset? You can talk to me. 
He said, Vern, let me tell you. I meant what I said, that I believe that God is a healer. I believe that God has been with me all the time. And I know he can be in charge of this. We left out of there and waited. And I couldn't tell none of you anything. I had to keep it to myself. But when the devil started stuff, God gave me strength to start mine. Amen. And I told him that I believed that God was going to heal him because I said, and I made it to some of the people. I told him, I'm getting on that train with him. I'm going to get in the, on the train with Bishop, and we're going to go through this. But I, and we went back after the six weeks, and we left out the office, and we waited six weeks, and we went back to the doctor. And I waited in the waiting room, and uh, John Johnson was with me. And John came out, and he said to me, Pastor, he's fine, and guess what? He don't even have to take one pill. Hey. He said, he don't even have to take one pill. He's fine. And he went through it, and that was 2003. Wow. And every time we went to the doctor, he would always say, everything is fine. Amen. Let me tell you something. You have to get yourself in a position, not what other people say. That's our biggest trouble. We got to listen to what other people tell us all the time. Yes. You have to realize yes. that you have to trust Jesus, right. not with this, but with your heart. When you say things, and I have told you this morning once, when you say something, you don't just say it. You have to really mean what you're saying. Because you don't know what's coming. Amen. You don't want to know what's coming tomorrow. And it's a lot of people now are having things in their lives that are happening. And it never happened like this before. And we wonder what's going on. That's why in your time, you need to spend time with the Lord so he can lead and direct, direct you. And the thing is, God is waiting for you to do what you should be doing. God has in the messages that I've been preaching, and I, I thought about it, I said, brother, I, I don't know. But God says to me, for me to do what he wants me to do, and not worry about what people think. And I'm learning. I'm learning. I used to worry about everything somebody would say. But I found it in this position, honey, you're going to do what God wants you to do. You have to trust him to the point that when he gives you something, even though it scares you to death, you got to walk out by faith and know that if he is there and I'm standing here, if I fall over there, he's going to catch me. Sometimes... God give us things to do and we don't do it because the devil is there cracking up, telling you what to do. But you got to speak to him. And sometimes, even if in your house, if they think something's wrong with you, don't worry about it. You talking to the Lord. And sometimes, when you talk out loud, it sounds like you're doing something. You're not keeping it to yourself. You got to let God know that you trust in him and not all the time what people say and what they think. This thing that is happening now all, it don't stop here in Chester. It does not stop in city or state. It does not even stop in country. And it leaves the country, and do you know this is all around the whole world? And we cannot take it lightly. Uh, we have been blessed, we've been blessed all our lives, especially some of us. We have been so blessed in our lives, 
until when things like that happen and you hear them, it just goes like this, yep. right on past you. Yeah. Because you never, you never went through anything like this. went through anything like this. But we don't know what God is doing. But we do know the devil is steadily busy. And right now, our only hope is in Christ Jesus. Everybody say Christ Jesus. That's our only hope now. And the other key to it, as I told you earlier, you know, there's a lot of people that are saved, and I'm so glad. And there's a lot of people trust the Lord, and I'm so glad. But I'm just saying to you, there's a pattern in your life. And our country and our, our cities, our states, we have elected officials that run this country. They're there because we put them there. They are there because you trust them that they're going to work out and save all of us. But I want to tell you today, you need to go a step further. Yes. Move on up. As that guy used to say, y'all know what it is. Don't act like you don't know, because I used to look up. Moving on up. We got to move up to the fact that we got to know that we know. It's nice to say these nice things and all like that, but you better get in line and use wisdom. Yes, that's right. The young people, uh, I've been around along, so I know some of it, but I'm saying to you young people, take your pattern, especially you young people that just got married and you're, you are in the church now and you have God. Hold on to him and making your decisions. Yes. Don't just go make a decision and don't care. Ask God about it. Yes. Ask him to show yes. you. Yes. Because a lot of times we make decisions and we do what? We fail. Yes. Our only hope that we have is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Well, Pastor, you always say it and so do everybody, but I'm still... This gets kind of rough sometimes, and I know it does, and so does Christ. But a lot of times when you go through things and you have an experience of going through things, that helps you. What do you mean? It helps you to be able to stand for whatever is coming. Yes. Nobody has ever told you that when I get saved, everything's going to be fine. I ain't got to worry about a thing. And that's the way that we feel. But I'm going to tell you today, you need Jesus Christ and you need to be saved. But there are things you want to go through and God wants us to go through. And there's a reason. There's a reason. And a lot of times when we get blessed and things happen to us and it's so overwhelming, it's so wonderful, we got a nerve some of the times to think we did it. We say, I did this and I did that. No. You need the Lord, Jesus Christ, to be the center of your life. Yeah. And when I say a center, make a practice of talking to him, giving him credit. Yeah. Even when you think you did it, you give him a credit. Because if it wasn't for him, number one, you wouldn't even be sitting here breathing. The protection of him comes over you. But what are you going to do for him? Give him credit in your life for most of the things that he does. Learn how to make a practice of saying thank you, Lord, in your mind. Just say thank you. If you walk over there and find $100 on the ground, I found me $100. Thank you, Lord, and go about your business. Listen, learn how to pattern your life and give all the credit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in this crisis right now, we don't even know what's going to happen. Now, I've been preaching about you don't even know what's going to happen when you leave out the door. I told you that. But your trust should be that the Lord is going to take care of it all. 
And all of us need to be sitting here today, if you are worrying, you need to stop worrying and take your mind on the Lord and keep it on him. Because if you do worry about it, when it's all over, you haven't done anything before you even started worrying. And, you, and you're sitting around and you're doing that. But we don't think when you're going through. You want to know, I'm going to get out of this. But I'm saying to you today, learn how to pattern your life around the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to lead and guide you. And you'll say, one day you'll get up and say, I trusted in God. And I had heard a long time ago that I needed to trust in him, but I never did. But I fully did it this time. And things begin to happen, and then you realize. But this morning, I want you, we don't know what the days ahead are going to be. And I'm not going to stand you and tell you tomorrow it's going to be this and that. I don't know. The only one who knows is the Lord Jesus Christ. God knows what he's doing, and he knows why he's doing this to us. We as a church, we as a Christian, it is not time for us to sit with our legs crossed and just act like it's nothing. We have to pray for it. Not only ourselves, we got children, we got grandchildren that's out there. And the devil is out there with him too. Did you know that? He is busy. But we can be busy praising God, thanking him for what he has done. This day, like I said, we're here on Sunday. Monday starts another week. Some of you don't have to go back to work for two weeks because they done settled that. Some of you work And some of of you now are working from home. You don't have to go into the office. You can stay at home and work. Some of us scared to death, and some people still have to go and go to work. But I want to tell you, we don't know. We don't have an idea. And we need to be serious in our thinking. We are part of this world. We know of a person or I say it like that but we know about God he's in control of not only this but he's in control of everything you have an opportunity now because you have accepted the Lord as your personal savior and he's standing here why not grab on to him Hallelujah. I always say the devil's over here and he's whispering to you And God is over here, standing here, waiting for you. Who are you going to choose? Who are you going to choose this day? Are you going to realize that we are in a situation now where everybody needs to do what they have to do? When you walked in there that day, this is something you don't usually see around here. On that table out there, they give you a chance to put this stuff on your hand. You didn't have to come in here without putting it on your hand unless you did. it was available for you to do it. We have all these things. The church is not nasty. You look at it, it's not nasty at all. And on Wednesday, we're going to get a thorough cleaning in here. When I say a thorough cleaning, the kind that they do for a situation like this. And I want you to know that we have things to do. We need to pray, and we need to pray earnestly and stop being foolish and do the will of God. We are really, truly blessed. All of us are sitting here happy and have a wonderful time. But let me tell you, there's people are going through. But God has provided for you to have the best even if you don't think it is. Amen. He has. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And the people don't, that go and say this, you're going to probably be mad at me, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm going to say it anyway. Amen. I'm not worried about a thing because God is taking care of me, whatever. Yeah. 
but the bucks don't stop with you. Amen. There's other people, and we got to remember, because you have so much faith and believe, everybody's not like you. Everybody's not in that same position. So therefore, we have to think of others. And like, I'm standing up here now, I believe God's with me. You standing there, and then when you say it, I act like you and nobody, there ain't nothing. But it is. Yes. Hold on yes. to what you believe and don't let nobody, nobody take it away from you. Don't let people. You know, yesterday I was in my house all day and all I thought about is all of you. It wasn't me. It was all of you. How can we do this? This is a lot of people. They are my children. Did you know I thought you was my children? And I want to do, Lord, the right thing in how to handle this. And I just stay all day long and stay before the Lord. And he gave me that 91st Psalm. And a lot of you know it if you went to the school of ministry because Sister Baker, you're going to learn it in her class if you want to get out of her class. And I, I got really tickled when I thought about it. I said, she's been teaching this for years. And I said, she even make them, I think they had to even learn it by heart. You had to memorize it. And I said, in our lifetime, when things happen like this, we wonder why is this like this or the other? But God already knows ahead of time what's coming on. That psalm will make you feel good. It will make you think. And as you read that psalm, and I'd like for you to do it in your reading, just save enough thoughts or, or put your glasses on a little longer or whatever. And take time and read it. And as you read verse to verse, put your mind in to the fact, Lord, thank you. Read that psalm because he is the one that's keeping you right now. Hold on. We got to learn how to strengthen the brother. You heard that? Strengthen. Strengthen the brother. And the positive talking, the positive speaking will bring you through this. Because you don't even know what's going to happen from day to day. But I'm just introducing you to a man that will take care of you when you don't even know how to take care of your own self. When you don't even understand, you know how to fix your mouth. Because if I tell that little baby back there with her mom, I tell her to come up and tell her something, she can repeat it. She'll say it back to me, whether she know what it means or not. But she is trained like that. She would say something back to me. So why don't you put that in your mouth instead of finding a whole lot of negative things of how it's going to be? Because you don't know. We got brains out there that's working to help us to get through this. I'm talking about when I say brains, they're real smart. But they don't have the full answer. And if they don't know the man that can give them the answer, then it's going to go on and on and on. But my God, if my people who are called by my what? Do what? Think about it. If we would just do that and believe it, Make another step and just try to believe what I'm saying to you. You need Jesus. And you need him right now. Some of you may not understand what I'm talking about. But I do know there's a key next to doing what you're supposed to be. And what you're supposed to do. And that, that what I'm trying to tell you, that word is obedience. You do it because I tell you to do it. Because I'm your pastor. 
And even if you don't always understand, God is speaking to me to tell you, get ready and get ready now. And I'm standing here and I'm looking at you. And it may not be true, but I'm seeing this. That some of us, I can see now, some of us hear me, but this is not what they want to hear. And I understand that. But God has a time where we go to church, we shout, and we jump up and down and have a good time. And on Monday, we forgot what we heard. And you know I'm telling the truth because I've done it. On Monday, I forgot. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I wait till I go to Sunday, and Sunday I get something else. But that's not the key. The key is that my time and my thoughts are with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I need him every moment. Listen, every hour. Because whatever you're doing without him, it ain't, it's not going to last long. You need something in you that will last. When I say that will last, it'll last for years. I was 14, and I'm 81 now. And I've been serving the Lord knowingly since I was 14. I'm 81 now. And there is nothing... No way that I feel as though I missed anything that the world had to offer me. I made a choice. And I want to say this. I don't think I'm perfect, and I don't think I'm all that good because I know better. But I do know that I am not sorry for I am not I don't care what you tell me or what you got to offer me what the world did for you. There is no way that I can stand up here and tell you I'm on a tissue. I can stand up here and tell you that I'm so, oh, I know I miss so much and I wish I had. No. I am not sorry. And God has truly, I could tell you the things that he has done for me in my life. He has done some wonderful things for me. And I'm not saying that I never had a hard way to go. I did. But I relied on him. And God has blessed me tremendously. And I don't care about what they did in the world. All I know that I accepted him, I lived for him, I denied a lot of stuff. And I was pushed to the side. But let me tell you something. Right now, right now, I know him for me. I was bashful. I wouldn't say nothing. Everybody knew me. There's people in here who knew me. But one day, one day, I closed my eyes on what people had to say. I closed my eyes to what they think. And I looked to Jesus, who made a way. When I became the first lady, I had all these friends. When I became the first lady, I didn't get one phone call from my so-called friends. Nobody called me. They just cut me loose. It hurt deeply. But I still stood with the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I have so many friends and so much until sometime I said, wow. Listen, whatever happens to you, and the devil want to make you think, if you don't do this or that, 
You trust in the Lord, and he will give you what you need. Matter of fact, you'll get people in your life. You're going to be so shocked that love you and did never know you. And some of you are experiencing it now. I have gone, and Sister McLaughlin, I mean, Minister McLaughlin was with me. And I went to a store, and she was with me. And I'm telling you the truth. This own, well, she had a, a position in the store, and she w was uh, like the manager thing. And she came up, she said, do I know you? I said, well, I come in here a lot. And she said, I know. She said, are you going to buy anything today? I said, I'm going to buy something. And she gave me a coupon in my hand for me to get, well, 25% off anything I bought. Amen. And Annie started laughing. And Annie got so tickled, she said, I don't care where you go, you get favor. <laughs> and I told her, this is how God works if you trust him. Amen. You're not gonna get without. Amen. You're not gonna get without. You're gonna get what you need, but you're not gonna get with, 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 uh, without. And you're not going to get everything you want. That's right. You're not. So don't let nobody tell you that everything's going to come your way and you get everything you want. You're not. But God, he will give you what you need. And any time you get in a position where you feel like you're alone, let me tell you something. You're not alone. And guess what? He will let you know that you're not alone that I'm with you, and I will take care of everything. And that's what he did to me yesterday, because I didn't know how to deal with this. But let me tell you something. He even uses people to take care of what you can't take care of. And then you look around, and you'll be wondering, oh, what am I doing? But God will do it. And before you know it, it's done. Yeah. That's how he works. And the, this morning is that I want you, not only about the virus and all that, but I want you to realize in your life, all of us are not chippies anymore. Did you know that? No, we're not. <laughs> I don't know. The health system right. got away now. Because when I was young, and, I, and if I was... If the person was 80, they didn't, they, don't act, they didn't act like me. But I got sense enough to know that I can do all these things because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he showed us favor because in this time, whether you want to face it or not, they are helping us to live longer. The medical system, they do some things wrong. I know that. Yeah. But there is now, people are living longer. Yeah. And look like God is saying, I'm going to let you live longer. So why don't you do right for me? Right. Why, why, don't you, why don't you do what I say to do? I'm telling you. I'm sharing with you. Please, change you know what you, and the thing about it is some people act like they don't know what they need to change. You know. Some people say, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, you did. I didn't know that was wrong. Oh, yes, you did. You know. But you want to cut corners and go around. And the sad part is you don't think nobody sees you. Uh-oh. She's talking too much now. Nobody knows about it because whatever I do is just between me or whoever. Let me tell you something. God sees everything. And the devil makes you forget who you serve. And you do these things and you feel bad. But I don't know why I'm talking this way. I, I, I don't even understand where I'm going. But I do know one thing, that God is with me. 
and God did not tell me to stop yet. So I'm going to do what he wants me to do. And my main objective is this, that you come to church every Sunday, you give God praises, and that's wonderful. But I want you, when you leave out of this church, that you will walk not like this, but I want you to walk upright. Walk upright. Stand up tall. Do you know, when you know you've done something right, and you know that you did the best you can, and you do something right, it makes you even feel good, even if you feel bad, because you did the right thing. Sometimes when you feel good and you do wrong, you're so sick. Why did I do this? I did it, but I did it now. Lord, forgive me. And you go about your business. And the next time, you do it again, and then you say it over and over again. This is not a plain time. If I never see anything that you do again, I want to tell you, get yourself right with the Lord. Stop playing games. Um, it's not worth it. Because nobody in here got a heaven or a hell to put you in. There's only one. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you today, I went this way and I'm not sorry. Amen. Everything I said today, I meant it. Amen. Everything that I said today, I do not apologize. And the reason why I don't, because it's the word of God. Amen. And we got to know now, no time for this foolishness. Amen. Yeah, it's no time. And if if, if I don't see you or I don't know about it or I'm thinking, don't think you're getting away. Because God is in control. And you don't straighten out. Get yourself together. He'll do it for you. Because he has his hand on you. And some of you are excellent in what you do. And you do have it made. But let me tell you something. The one is in control can slap it right away from you. I am not me. I'm just saying this. I, it's not me. It's not me. I am God. And there is no other one like me. You understand? I am God. And there is no other one like me. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ told us. So, I'm going by the word of God. And if there's any question to what I'm saying, read the word of God. Ask him to help you to find it. And guess what? He'll lead you to it. I can't, I can't go in here and, and talk to you and smile at you. And when I get up to talk about what Jesus wants me to say, that I got to worry about who's looking at me and who likes me. There was a time in my life that I used to. But right now, I don't know what he did to me. I have no idea of what he did for me. But there's one thing he did for me, and I believe he's with me, and I believe that he's going to show me the way. And I want to tell you, I sold myself out to him. And I want him to give me the boldness to tell you what's right. I can't worry about that other stuff that's with it. But I can say, I can go home and lay down 
and I can sleep at night because I did what God told me to do. Get right with God. And the other part is, do it now. Get right with God. But do it when? Do it now. Because I'm telling you, and I'm feeling in my spirit, that we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And long as you can open up your mouth, you can cry out. And matter of fact, if you get your heart right, God can see your heart because we got to cut it open to see it. But he don't have to. And he can see whether you playing games or are you doing the right thing. Trust the Lord. Hold on him. And another part of it is, if you never tried him, try him now. Just try him. And I'm telling you, you'll be a very happy person. Because that devil make you think he's the greatest. He know how to show you all this good stuff. But God. But God. I'd like everybody to stand. As I conclude this time of sharing, I want to encourage you to remember to continue to honor God with the giving of your tithes and offerings. As always, you can send your offering by U.S. mail to our church address, First Pentecostal Holy Church, 324 Pusey Street, Chester, PA, 19013. You can also give online using PayPal. If you have a PayPal account, you can help us defer fees by doing a transfer from your account to ours, which is FPHCChester at Verizon.net. If you don't have a PayPal account, you can still use this option by using the PayPal link on the give page of our website, FPHCChester.org. Finally, I invite you to join us for a time of prayer via conference call on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. The dial number is 646-558-8656. Meeting ID is 825-512-2242. Please be safe, be encouraged until we meet again, and remember, to God be the glory.